Hi, I'm Alexei. I'm one of the co-founders of Interlay. So Polkara Decoded was a very important event for Interlay because it gave us the chance to meet a lot of people from our community, very early operators of our vaults, community members that have participated in hackathons and have been with us from the very, very start. And we never met them in person. And it's a very different feeling um, if you actually get to speak with someone and they approach you like, hey, yeah, I'm XYZ on Discord and I've been around for a while. And you're like, oh, cool, yeah, I've never seen you before in person. But you actually have a lot of things in common. So it's really nice to just catch up in person, meet face to face, um, especially after such a long time in solitude, locked up um, during COVID. I think for this year, that was definitely the main benefit. So I was particularly excited to see a lot of the new projects, the new parachains that have just launched on Polkarot or are about to launch, really present their vision, their use case. When you're working on your own product, you're often, you know, your head's down focusing on one thing and you don't really have the time and, and also the power and the strength to like go out and like spend time reading about everything. But coming to a conference, you know, you have these two days full of action, full of new things that you just sit down, listen to, and really get a better picture of what, what things are going on, what new innovations are coming to Polkarot. And of course, this also helps us then better plan ahead and really think about use cases and things that we could do in the future together with these new projects. So the most interesting use cases for XCM and IntraBDC are mainly to allow people to use Bitcoin on other parachains. And each parachain specializes on some certain use case. You have DeFi parachains like Akala with their stablecoin and synthetic products where you can use Bitcoin as collateral, for example. On the other hand, you have Moonbeam and EVMs where you have new smart contracts, you have people moving over from Ethereum, and you can get exposure to all of these cool products that you had on other chains like Ethereum again, but with better performance and a trustless bit conversion over the centralized ones that you have on other chains. Also very interesting could be private Bitcoin transactions, right? So you move IBTC over to Manta Network and you can use it privately there. Shared security is a very useful tool for new projects. We're used to shared security coming from chains like Ethereum, where e every smart contract, every dApp has the same guarantee enforced by one consensus. Now, in sharded systems like Polkadot, each parachain is a standalone chain, and we have a lot of new blockchains coming out, and the movement is generally from smart contracts to layer one networks. Now, as a product team, we can verify the consensus and security of each and every new chain that comes up. So it's very difficult for us to have to spend hours and hours and look at security audits and so on. If we have, however, a shared consensus and shared security model like in Polkadot, where we have different parachains that plug into the relay chain, we, can, we know that we just need to trust Polkadot's consensus. We need to trust that this parent level chain is secure. And since we're also connected to Polkadot, that kind of makes a lot of sense because we know that all of these parachains, they make the same assumptions and we just can focus on the product rather than having to worry about, are they using the right proof of stake mechanism? Could this be attacked? Do they have enough decentralization? Because all of these things will affect our security as well, especially in an interconnected world. Polkadot helped us shape Interlay's innovation by giving us the tools to build a fully customized chain that allows us to really focus on bringing Bitcoin to other networks in a fully decentralized manner. When we started Interlay, we actually tried to build a proof of concept on Ethereum at first and quickly realized that while it's a very easy to use tool, it doesn't allow us to really go in depth in terms of protocol design and security. One of the most interesting things in Polkadot is the modularity. You have this plug and play methodology. Um, we can take different palettes which allow us to import different functionality into our chain very quickly. But on the other hand, we can customize our own things. So one very interesting example is we use Bitcoin Core libraries. So the code that actually is maintained by the Bitcoin Core community and that runs on all the Bitcoin nodes, we're able to import parts of that into our parachain and avoid rewriting all of Bitcoin security primitives from scratch, which of course means there's less space for error. And on the other hand, we can actually focus on the products and instead of rewriting everything in, for example, Solidity, as we would have to do on Ethereum. What inspires me the most, and I think us as a team, is the fact that Bitcoin started a vision, a vision of a fully transparent, decentralized, and trustless financial ecosystem. And we've come so far with so many new use cases and a lot of things that you can do now with other assets. 
but you have this chasm between adoption, which Bitcoin is driving actually globally because it is so simple, and innovation which is happening on all of these new chains. And what we're trying to do is really bridge this gap and connect these two worlds because in the end, technology is very important and new products and DeFi and Metaverse, it's super interesting, but we often forget why Bitcoin is actually created. It was created to give financial freedom to people who actually need it and in countries where they perhaps cannot trust the local currency. And giving them access to these new products and new innovations while using Bitcoin, I think um, seeing this in practice and seeing this really make the lives of people easier, that's something that we really like, would like to see and that's what's really driving us. So some of the most interesting challenges that we faced are not necessarily related to Polkadot itself. Polkadot gives us a lot of tools. There's a lot of tech we can use, but we work with Bitcoin and a lot of people have tried to make Bitcoin um, interoperable, add more features on top. I mean, we've been trying to do that since 2015, trying to you know, add features on top of BTC. And then we realized, well, Bitcoin should, probably shouldn't change. And the biggest challenge is working with the limited set of functionality that you have, but still making sure that we don't succumb to the simple way of doing things and essentially end up with a centralized solution like so many before us and really always stick true to the vision of being fully transparent, decentralized from day one. And this sometimes makes things a bit more difficult and things take longer. Um, but if it were so easy, somebody would have already done it. And that's probably one of the biggest challenges.